Hey folks, on the Susquehanna today, uh, Drew Gregory's already out there somewhere. I'm gonna catch up with him in a little bit. Um, do a little bit of fishing as he's pre-fishing for the Bassmaster event that's here this weekend. Uh, he got a little bit of a head start. I had to go do some Torquedo pit crew stuff and help some folks out who, who needed to learn a few preventative maintenance things. Um, if you own a Torquedo, please watch some of the preventative maintenance videos. They're in the Torquedo Ultralight install speed range uh, playlist that, that's on the channel. Um, really just take the time to watch some of those preventative maintenance ones. There's one that actually is called preventative maintenance. Uh, the other one is don't tension the, the cable. And there's some that go over the how to get a better lift on the motor and so forth. So educate yourself. I have those resources uh, for you. Uh, but before we start, uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about a tournament of sorts, and I'm going to, you know, kind of be uh, doing something here as we're fishing the Susquehanna, doing a little bit of a river cleanup each time we access a point. I'm going to walk around and, and find some trash. Uh, you can win some stuff. RJM, uh, Ryan's doing a, a, uh, a tournament, a free tournament where you can win some stuff just by cleaning up. So I already got, looks like somebody uh, lost the tube. We don't want that to end up in someone's tires. We'll walk around, see what other trash we can pick up here before we launch. Then we'll catch up with Drew. All right, it only took between five and 10 minutes uh, to fill it up a bag. You know, if all of us are doing it, we're gonna have a big impact. So, looks like uh, I found Drew left his, his flogger behind. I'll make sure to return that to him. Took my picture of the trash. That counts as an entry. Looks like it's uploading on uh, Fishing Chaos. And, uh, you know, it's, it's one more entry to win some of the cool prizes he has. And it's free, so sign up. Do it. Clean up some trash, win some stuff. So I'm just catching up, but I'm gonna, as I go, throw this, I uh, actually got the smaller size evergreen shower blow. And uh, I don't know why, I'm not a huge fan of the uh, the feathers. I put a spin tech hook on the end there. I don't know what that's gonna do. That will help as much as the Ryugi quad spin hooks that I put on the crankbaits. We'll see. The hooks on the shower blow are actually really good at holding fish. Jake told me that and he's right. You know, you, you can lose fish on it, but it's, the stock hooks are really good. late start really wanted to do the top water thing and uh, you know it, it this shouldn't work according to you know top water rules but these smallmouth they don't follow the rules they just want to eat nice one shower blow today. It's exciting. Alright, another good one. Bigger. Probably a 
I think the last one was about 18. I didn't really measure it. This one's at least that. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah, they like it. I like it. We all sort of like it. Very cool. Oh, yeah. I thought it was bigger. 17 and three quarter, but real nice, exciting top water blow up. <laughs> See you, guy. Nice. It's fun. And, you know, at least the first two are holding on pretty good. Um, I am throwing it on my uh, one of the first rain shadows that I had. Uh, I had uh, Kevin with Stiffy Custom Rods do for me. Uh, it's a Revelation 7 foot. It's a it's a medium moderate, and I think it's good for jerk baits and and other longer, skinnier baits like this. The shower blow. Ooh, he he bent a hook. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to bend that back. Um, I don't I don't feel like it's necessarily the right option for the crankbait because it's a more bulbous um, you know it's harder to move in their mouth you know this as opposed to a linear shape uh, is it's harder to move and that's why I built the same kind of blank but rain shadow revelation medium heavy for that one but man I haven't even cast the crankbait yet because this top water is so much fun. Long bomb cast to the head of the island. I like using the braid. There is a fluoro leader. Actually, it's a copolymer leader. But it's clear. And the moderate action rod does a good job launching it really far. Um, this is all really skinny water like yeah i think right here it's a foot and a half but most of where i just cast was about a foot deep and i'm gonna about to catch this on the grass but it's okay i'm getting it real close to the grass at the head of that island and uh you know there's some ambush points there for the fish that are apparently not right there but you keep moving and making long casts. So they don't see you, they just see this aggressive, stupid looking minnow doing stupid things that they want to eat because they got to take stupid out of the gene pool. That's their job. They thin the herd. Injured, sick, or just stupid things need to die. Actually locating Drew out here is proving to be difficult. I thought I saw Drew and it was somebody else in a crescent sholey uh, with a motor on it. I don't know, we're playing phone tag. And he's like, I think you're above me and now I think you're below me. And I'm like, I've just moved steadily upstream. All right, finally caught up with Drew and uh, we got a little mechanical issue we got to address. Yeah, let's address, let's so address. So what can happen sometimes when these motors well, first we're going to just point out that the steering triangle is this way and so is the motor. So they're, they're, they're not the way they should be. Uh, what I think happens is you smack rocks and it actually loosens the black football. So I'm going to need you to hold on to the steering triangle and I'm going to tighten this back on because, because the, pipe is, is, Look. the pipe is threaded. Well, yeah, Possibly you got to tighten your... We tightened it before we got in the water, but not enough. We'll apparently. tighten that, but, but what's happening is inside there, there's... Right. This pipe comes down and, and connects to that, and there's right. a seal, and it's threaded. And, and tonight we'll get channel locks on it and, mm. uh, and really tighten that pipe even more. Right. But, I mean, it'll even spin, with look, the rock guard... It just spins like that. Okay. Just... Even with the rock guard, we're going to... Yeah. Know, it, it, everything takes a beating out here in this... True. This shallow rocky river. So it does. Let's see what we can do with it. All right, we got Drew back in motion as my motor's grinding. Um, I understand that this is the hardest environment to use this motor, and uh, 
when you get in real shallow uh, and it starts smacking around that black football can come unspun the threads that hold it on uh, from the silver pipe and you gotta tighten that back down the real solution is to take it apart pull the pull the uh, profile off get channel locks on there and do it in a shop where you're really bracing that that motor still and turning on that pipe uh, but for now Drew's back in business and uh, we're gonna go catch some fish <laughs> you've been catching them though I have been catching them. I got a 19 and like a half, 19 and a quarter here, uh, and one that was almost 18. Nice. And I uh, missed a couple others. And it's pre-fishing, so I just pulled the bait away. So right. I actually did not want to catch the 19 uh, and a half. It came so fast out from underneath a little patch of eel grass. Yeah. That uh, I couldn't do anything about it. So where, where are you seeing them? Like where? Yeah, you know, I've caught them a lot of different structure. places. Yeah, I'll tell you this, I've caught them a lot of different places on the river and everyone has their own style. But for me, I like fishing so shallow, I like to find fish that are shallower than anybody even thinks possible. Which is why today, in practice here, I'm just exploring the shallowest little cuts and creeks possible. And yeah, there's not a lot of fish in there, but believe it or not, there's some big fish that live in 10 inches of the water, so. Nice. Hey, you got a pretty cool way of rigging your, uh, your sense of jerk shed. You want to show me that? Yeah, it's a little bit wonky. I was trying something new with it today because it's still a, a work in progress. But basically, I actually rigged it upside down on this one. But I, I do like it the other way a little bit better, but I was trying upside down. Is that a frog hook? And it's a double frog hook, exactly. And you can go with the weighted or non-weighted. If you want to cast it further, you can go with the weighted, but the Z-Man elastic floats. So even though this is probably eighth of an ounce, it really throws like a 16th, you know, it actually fishes like a 16th. Yeah. But it throws like, you know, obviously an eighth. Yeah, sorry, I was distracted. You, you got them hitting the surface in this little. I don't think they oh, were big oh, ones. Oh yeah, little guy. Yeah, a little, little bait. But anyway, yeah, this is uh, the rig, and I put some surgical tubing type, type stuff here, just to keep that. It's weird. You actually have to punch a hole through with a hook, through this bait first, and rig it all up, and then tie it on. Because you can't thread. It's got double hooks, so you can't just thread it uh, on one of the hooks. So it's a little bit of interesting concept. I love it. Very cool. Because when you get them on, trust me, you're they're not you got them. off. Nice. Oh, you look so confused. You confused, little dude? What's happening? What's happening to me? I was eating and this thing started moving me sideways. He's okay. He, I think he had a decent one following along with him. He's not big though. Oh, there we go. There we go, Jeff. Looks like Drew's got one in there. There we go. Good one, bud. It's a good one. Hung up on this crap right here. Hung up on a stick. There we go. Under the eel grass. Nice. Good one. Under the eel grass. Very cool. Yeah, 18 and a half. 18 and a half. Nice. Don't let him go yet. I'm going to do a yeah, dome, dome release. That's a chunky fish, dude. Yeah. Look at all this wood. Yep. Beautiful. 
Nice catch, man. Matted up eelgrass, just ripping a spinner right by. Very cool. Beautiful, beautiful Susquehanna smallmouth. So nice catch, bud. Yep. I like that glassy look out in the middle. Right? That kind yeah. of slick glass in the very middle. Yeah. We need something to tie together with our, our wood and eelgrass pattern. Okay. Been working the, the shower blow, yeah. and I think I'm not moving it as fast as say a whopper plopper, so yeah. I get I get a little bit more calling them in right. than just a straight retreat. Yeah, a little bit more time, yeah. Yep. The other thing, of course, is the thing about the spinner rays, I'm like burning it so fast and just jerking it, just causing commotion that I can kind of rip that eelgrass off of it. Right. You know, it's kind of natural, kind of a part of its retrieve. What do you what do you like in a spinner bait for this fast presentation? Well, I'm throwing an ounce. Okay. <laughs> but and then I'm burning it in. But it's a a special kind of I don't know low profile spinner bait that has weight on the shank, so it's an ounce, but it's not your like bottom dweller ounce, you know? Yep. So anyway, let's turn. I'm gonna turn over here and try to throw these bubbles with it down. Okay. That, to me, this is gold. You find stuff in the middle that's random, like where I'm trying to head to an area where I found a big school in the past. You know that stuff's kind of safe. You know what I mean? Most people probably just aren't gonna find it. Well, it's the same thing with the uh, film and Jody on the new, where yeah. he said, you know, this is a spot that people zoom right past and miss it. Yeah. Uh, there's something to that. That's a good one. Super long, but he's fat. Sort of out in the open. I know this um, this side of the river has less of the eelgrass breaking free, and uh, it certainly makes fishing this shower blow less less frustrating, more productive, I believe. We'll see. I got to get this off with pliers, but. That's a stud, probably 17 inch, but thick. It's alright, I called you thick. Trust me, it's a compliment. Mm. Oh, that was a good, good top water hit. Nice fish, right at the end of this pool, before it takes off again. Oh, the quality of the hit is like so much of the joy of top water. All right, gonna keep you buttoned just a little bit longer. Just get in the net. Oh, good job. All right, I think that Drew must have accomplished his uh, his pre-fishing goals for the day because I can see him heading back to the uh, the launch there. So, been a fun day. Uh, stay tuned. I am gonna follow uh, Drew for both days of his tournament here on the Susquehanna, uh, and I got one more day just just to fish with him, have some fun. Thanks for watching. See you.